Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the What the Football channel. This is the BH and Scrubber Show. And on today's show, we're going to be doing double duty today. We're going to do a recap of that, uh, uh, the game against the Jets. And then we're also going to preview uh, the upcoming game against San Francisco this Sunday. So don't be scared. Come join us next Sunday. It's going to be a rough game. We get it. But uh, just we had fun at that last one, the, the forever game last week. Jeez, seemed to go on forever, <laughs> dude. It was like halfway through the first quarter, and I'm like, what the fuck, man? It seemed like it's the longest game in history. So, uh, man, pretty back and forth game. Not a very good first half. I thought the second half was exciting, at least. So, uh, got some things done. But uh, let's hear your opinion on some of this stuff, BH. Yeah, I agree, man. It's, uh, I mean, once again, like I said last week, a lot of average to below average football from our commanders, to be honest. Uh, <clears throat> that's the trend, and that's probably how it's going to finish out. Um, there were some spikes. There were some individual players who had, had good play, but overall, you know, it, it's, a, it's a train wreck. Yeah. Um, and and the, the biggest thing, and like you said, the most exciting thing was the second half, and Jacoby Brissett got in there. And lit it up. I mean, he's like got five drives and five touchdowns. I mean, he looks like he's all world. Um, and that was great, man. And he really has looked good. Um, Sam getting benched. And now we know that Sam is not playing against San Francisco. Right. And that's not surprising. I, I, I liken it. Um, how should I say? Sam looks lost. He does. He's living in his head. Yeah, I think he has looked at so much film, uh, taken on more and more of the playbook. Is that we you know he's so he was good early, right? When we mm -hmm. talked about that, hey, you know, no coach is going to give a quarterback all 397 plays from the playbook, but they keep adding them, they keep adding them, they keep having wrinkles, adding reads, adding sets, and then all of a sudden, I think it all just caved in on Sam, man, because I don't, I can't. There's really no other explanation for me. Um, that why he just looks so lost. And Sam's a lot like you've ever seen a fighter, right? Uh, in a fight getting just beat to death. His nose is broke. He's bleeding out of his asshole. And the fighter won't quit. They, they, those guys don't quit. It's up to the guys in the corner to throw the towel in. Yeah. That fighter won't quit. And that's how Sam is. Sam's not going to go. He's just not going to quit. It's just a lot. Most NFL players, it's not in their DNA. They need a medical guy. They need a coach. They need someone to say, hey, you're done, man. Go sit down. And I think that's what it was with Sam. I mean, anyone could see it. I mean, you 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 watch the game. Yeah. You can just tell he's not the same guy. No, not at all, dude. Bad decision making, hesitating, just you know, his players didn't help him much at the beginning either. That was a fucking disaster. The first pass of the game is a drop pass. The second pass of the game is a drop pass slash interception. Jesus, he must be. He must yeah. have been freaking out, but he did. He looked bad. He just looked, like you said, he looked lost. He yeah. looked beat up. Yeah, he just doesn't look like, and he can't recover. He doesn't have. You, I'm that way too. You know, I'm learning something. You hit a wall. You can't cram any more information into your head. There ain't. You can't just do any more. Willpower just won't won't carry you past that. So I feel bad for him, but uh, he'll recover. He's young. Yep, exactly. And it's sort of, I think it falls into like, you you just related to it, right? You're doing something so much, it's uh, over an, uh, paralysis by over analysis. Mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't matter how young you are, how much money you're getting paid. It, it, you, we're all humans. We can jam so much stuff in there. And after a while, it turns in, you know, and, and Jacoby's a vet. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that Jacoby Brissett hasn't seen. And, and Jacoby has not just been a backup quarterback. But Jacoby's like started over long stretches for teams. Yeah. And he's a veteran who has been in and led a team. So it's not surprising what he's done. So, um, yeah, it'll maybe get the other guys to a chance to step up, look at the offense a little. We got guys to coming up in this game to look at. Um, I, I don't have much more to say in terms of the game last week, except it was nice that they did come back. You know, they, yeah. they kind of fought back. Um, I'm not going to get in too much of the uh, pro football focus stuff, but just want to say right away, top guy, Sam Cosby, number one, again, uh, Chris Rodriguez, 84.9. 
So we all saw that. You saw mm-hmm. it. Yeah, you he didn't had a good need game. Pro Football Focus to tell you. Yeah, he had a good game. And then last but not least, a guy that you called out a couple times uh, was Trent Scott, mm. the tackle, you yeah. know, who came in. Uh, I think he came in for Wiley. Trent Scott, uh, he he did pretty well. He actually got a good score in a limited amount. Um, and then on D, Kaliki Hudson and yeah. Kendall Fuller. Yeah. That's not a shocker. Um, one thing that is kind of good along those lines is our our boy Emmanuel Forbes managed to put up a 70, um, which is not bad. But the good thing about it is, is that he is uh, he's kind of strung some low 70s games all in a row mm. as opposed to those like 39s. <laughs> and 40 so maybe something clicked in his head so he's not playing great um so and then bottom of the pack john bates i don't think anyone would argue with that he was pretty much dog poop didn't he drop two passes yeah i think he dropped a couple he was terrible yeah yeah and then basically you know cam curl was kind of one of our lowest rated guys benjamin st juice who had a concussion wasn't that great either cam i don't i don't know what's going on with cam but he's just he's another guy that's not the same guy he, you know maybe it's just the team he's just he, you know he's, he didn't get extended didn't get a contract the team's playing like crap i guess it's sort of just the whole everything that's going on he's just he just hasn't seemed to have been his old self so you know yeah anyway we could we could beat that to death um but now we got San Francisco. We thought we had problems last week. <laughs> so I get in that, you know, a thing is if we were playing maybe the Giants this week or, you know, someone like that, if the schedule was different, maybe Atlanta at home, you might have seen uh, them throw Sam out there one more time. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, maybe not. But this week against San Francisco, I don't think so. Uh they're good, and like we were talking earlier, they got beat. They got beat, so they're going to have a case of the red ass. That's for sure. They're going to be pissed. Yep. And they're, um, number two, they're trying to they their, are their division two and number one seed. Yep. So, yeah, and it's a dog race for number one right now. So yeah. there, there's no let up. There's none of that. Hey, we're playing the Commanders. No, because they're eleven and four. Um, Eagles are eleven and four. Cowboys are right behind at ten and five. And then who else? So Detroit's the eleven and four. Yeah. So you want? Yeah. You you everyone wants that first uh, seed. You get a buy. Yeah. You ho- you know you get a buy and you host the the next game. I mean, shit, man, that's golden. So they're they're going to come in here, whew, red hot. Um, they're just a really good team um, on offense. Um, I know that uh, Brock Purdy kind of went through quite a few interceptions. It was a weird game. Uh, did you see much of it? I did. I watched the game. Yeah, he he yeah. He just didn't look right. He looked something. I can't put my finger on it. Uh one or two of those interceptions weren't really his fault, if I remember correctly. Uh Correct. just, you know, it's like we talk about on this channel. Some teams come out with the heat and some teams don't. And just for some reason, and he got benched for uh uh, uh Sam Darnold. Yeah. And I think yeah. He hurt. He did get dinged up. I forget what he he hurt something. He got a stinger, neck or shoulder stinger. Okay. And they just they just you know I think for both reasons you know he, they, he just didn't have it. And when he got that stinger, I think coach said, "Oh, okay, let's not mess with this." Uh, but once again, this is a guy that's going to come back. He's going to be hot. He's going to mm-hmm. want to make up for that. So that that all spells trouble. Uh, the, the amount of. Um, Good. I mean, God, Christian McCaffrey, Brendan yeah. Ayuk, George Kittle, Debo Samuel. Oof, we are going to have our hands full yeah. uh, fighting them. Uh, and on defense, you know, we're, we're kind of hurting now, too, because um, Ben St. Juice uh, has got a concussion. I don't think he comes uh, is going to be able to work his way out of it. Mm. It's it, it as they say there's only been two three players all year who got injured on one Sunday and and got through concussion protocol by the next one. That's everyone else thing. is keep me. Yeah, oh yeah, ball, that's what I say. Yeah, everyone else is two to five weeks, depending how serious it is. So, I, I mean, so right there, 
you know, thank God we, you know, got Fuller out there. But, man, it's going to be Fuller, Forbes, Quan Martin against all those guys. So we're going to have our hands full with with that. So, well, give those young guys a chance to step up. Um, I want to see guys, too, like um, KJ Henry. Yeah out there Forbes and Quan let's see them I mean really Christian Holmes Caillou Blue Kelly get them all out there I mean I mean what the heck you know I mean we I know it's kind of unfair to put them out against such a good team but we need to be able to have some film on these guys for our new people to analyze and to watch they got a big decisions roster decisions to make next year you know they've so I'd like to see them so I mean it doesn't look good for my end. <laughs> you know, it's going to take some, you know, it's just really stepping up. But these guys, I mean, the Jets, like like you said, the Jets had a three scores in like no time at all on us. You know, so yeah. if if the Jets could do it, yeah, these guys, it'll be brutal. So, yeah. Um, what do you think now? You know. Now our offense against their defense, a lot of the same. Yeah, definitely. You know? They got a super strong defense, man. Them guys are brutal. So with Jacoby in there, it might change some of the dynamic of the team. If we can keep uh, Trent Scott yep. on that on that right hand side there, uh, but uh, we're pulling back uh, Jarrett Patterson. Did we mention that earlier? Yes. No, no, I don't think we did. We were talking about it earlier, but you know, oh, yeah, we Jared about Patterson say here, but yeah, Jarrett Patterson is going to come back because we believe that Jonathan Williams is in concussion protocol. Uh, Chris Rodriguez might not make it back. And then uh, B Rob either. Maybe might not make it. I don't know. Th- I don't think so. Not with a, I think it's a hamstring and it sounds like yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where he might be okay and then go out and just pull it again. So right. I mean, we're gonna be we're gonna be really down to it, man. Right. Uh, because yeah, Rodriguez. I mean, he was in a boot right after the game, which is precautionary. But and we'll see with an ankle injury. I never did get any clarity. We'll know some, a little more on Sunday if it was a high ankle sprain, maybe a mid. But um, you can play. You know, you can play on it, but. It's a lot of pain and up against a good team. It's going to be tough. Um, So, yeah, I'd like to see what Jacoby can do. And that might help them pinpoint some of the things that are going on. If he can play good, is it, you know, was it Sam or if he plays just so, so, and he takes a bunch of sacks and doesn't produce, is it the enemy? Is it, uh, the line, they should be able to see some things going on here uh, with him in there that might be different than having Sam in there. And I like Jacoby. I, it reminds me of a couple things, you know, like Sam, I know he's six foot, six foot one. But then when you see a guy in there that's six foot four, almost six foot five in there, when he stands up in the pocket, you're like, the dude looks like the Eiffel Tower, dude. He looks gigantic. You know what I'm saying? And you see Sam and people say, oh, why well, doesn't Sam, you know, do these you know, crossing routes or these little slants? And he's just like uh, Russell Wilson. He can't see over the top. And he's got the yep. arm and stuff like that, but he, he just can't see that. And he doesn't see things good anyways, it seems like to me. So uh, it's nice seeing Jacoby in there. And maybe that might be, some of the difference in this game, if we can get some crossing routes, some of those slants, and then if he's more willing to stay in the pocket, Sam was just ejecting from the pocket. Just he's seeing color everywhere. So yeah, uh, but Jacoby is more a little bit more willing to stand in there, and maybe we can get Jahan Dotson in the mix and get our get our weapons in the mix more if he can stretch, you know, another second out of the pocket let the plays develop because our plays don't develop with Sam in the pocket. It just doesn't happen. He, he can't do his first read. If he's got to wait for the guy to get downfield, he, he can't do that. So he's got the arm. And then the other thing about Sam that I noticed that is much like uh, Russell Wilson is as well as he can't anticipate a throw. 
Russell Wilson yeah. balls or them moon balls and them rainbows. They're great because he's waiting for the guy to get open and he's got a weapon and he can see the guy getting open and he can, he can throw that ball, but he's got to wait and see for the guy to get open. I think Sam has that same problem. You can't just anticipate you watch Tua uh, tug of Iowa for uh, Miami and, and, and uh, their number 10 guy, a uh, Hill Tyreek Hill. He throws the ball. Tyreek hasn't made his cut. He hasn't stopped and turned around, and he'll throw the ball. He's not even looking. And as soon as Tyreek turns around, I mean, he's got a split second, and the ball hits him, and, and it doesn't seem like Sam can do that. So yeah, I'm hoping that Brissett can – I really want to see this, like you said, see these younger players get out there and play. But let's get them in the mix. Let's get them going, and uh, I don't know. It, I really I don't have much hope for this game, but maybe they can pull it together and show some respect for themselves and for the fans. And uh, they want to get paid next year, too. So we want to bring some of those people back. Yeah. We want to see what they can do. And we have some ideas of who we want to come back and maybe some people who we don't want to come back. Right. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. And like you said, it'd be nice to, you know, to get an idea of. What's going on? Is there, like you said, is there, are there flaws in, in the offensive play calling in the offensive scheme or, you know, it could be something as simple as, as Sam, like we talked about earlier, just cut, got burned out. Like you said, hit the wall. Um, but, and this would be a great opportunity for uh, EB uh, to get in there and exploit what he wants to do because so many of our offensive weapons have just disappeared. It's like, we don't even have tight ends anymore, you know, so that, let's hope it, Let's hope it gets going. Yeah, it was, you know, speaking of seeing guys, I mean, we may, it's going to be interesting, like from the standpoint of injuries. I mean, you know, the O-line's gotten pretty beat up. Um, I mean, I think Cornelius Lucas will probably uh, end up playing again. You know, we don't know about Leno. Hmm. Um, I think Wiley comes back, but if not, you know, why not let, um, what's his name, uh, Trent? Yeah, Trent Scott. Trent Scott, let him get in there. Yep. I, I'm guessing it's center. Uh, Larson's got a knee issue. Um, you know, we might see Gates again. Um, Sadiq Charles did play better at left guard this time. He wasn't an all-star. He played, he, but he he was in there, so he played. Um, you know, I was looking at a list of, of all the – I made a list here of all the people that are uh, kind of the most important – free agents for next year. And then I threw in two players, um, Logan Thomas mm -hmm. and Charles Leno. Those mm -hmm. are Logan Thomas and Charles Leno aren't free agents, but they're guys at the end of their contracts who are going to be making a lot of money for being pretty average. I mean, you know, yeah. Logan, eight and a half million. Uh, Thomas will be 15 million against the cap. Jeez. So let's say you wipe, wipe all the, look at all these people, right? Larson. Jacoby, Kendall Fuller, Barton, Sadiq Charles, Cam, Cam Curl, Tony o. Gibson, Curtis Samuel, James Smith Williams, uh, Lucas is another one. He's, he's, he's just signed till this year. So look at that list. And, and then what do you have, man? You've got um, – you don't have a swing tackle now because Lucas is gone. You don't have a left tackle because Leno's – you don't have a strong safety because Cam's gone. Don't have a number one tight end. You don't have a middle linebacker. You don't have a number one corner. You don't have a left guard. Um, you don't have your number three wide receiver. Yeah. And literally, you pretty much don't have a center. Right. Nick Gates is coming back and, and the rookie who got hurt and couldn't even play four games. So we don't even have a center. And we really, two defensive ends, we might have one. James Smith Williams looked pretty good. That's another guy I didn't mention last week. He'd been out and he played pretty good. So we, we we're missing a defensive end. Dude, that's that's you know, some of these guys are gonna be brought back. Uh, let's hope, but a lot of these guys aren't gonna be there. That's why we have to see so many of these young guys. That's the reason why, man. We gotta, you know, we wanna see, look, we wanna see Klee Hudson some more. We wanna oh, see yeah. Cole Turner. Trent Scott, man, Jalen Harris, Andre Jones, Terrell Burgess, Christian Holmes. I mean, that's why we want to see these guys. And there's some other offensive. I mean, they're not going to probably play some of these 
they won't even be active guys like, you know, Nolan Laufenberg and some of these other guards and stuff that we have. I mean, I, I don't think they're going to maybe against the Cowboys, maybe they'll bring them in like a preseason game and let the scrubs play. But at this point, you know, if we, as we think about next year, man, there's a lot of holes to fill. Yeah. So well, anyway, we I, just wanted, caps, I wanted to get that. Yep. That's yeah. So you can, you know, bring a lot of these guys back. I mean, I don't see, I don't, I mean, I mean, Cornelius Lucas, James Smith, Williams, you know, guys like that, who knows, maybe, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, even Jacoby's not on there. Yeah. Larson won't be brought back. So yeah, it's going to be what, interesting, but you know, I think paid Jacoby this year, like eight or 10 mil, eight, eight and a half mil. Yeah. I mean, personally, for me, as much as I like Jacoby, and he's a killer backup to have. He is. Um, if they get a quarterback in, with the first pick, let's say right. they go for it. They go, we got this guy here, Drake May. Boom. I, I mean, for me, I'd say keep Sam. Yeah. And then just have to wave goodbye to Kobe. Yeah. Because you can get like Jake, Jake Fromm for like, you know, and save, you know, seven and a half million dollars and after all these holes i just talked about Mm -hmm. you you need that seven and a half million and you got to sign some good not just bodies but maybe you know don't go ron rivera style free agents maybe try and get some impactful ones i mean god dude nick gates was a free agent blah terrible (laughs) wiley free agent nothing i mean you know i mean it's just like you know it's like it's like almost we've got worse so, um, so I mean, I, I mean, nothing against uh, Jacoby. I mean, heck, I like the guy, but yeah. you know, if we go quarterback, it's a luxury we can't have. We'll just keep Sam. I think Sam would be a good backup, and he yep. can continue to develop too. Yeah, and it's it's yeah. always good to get younger. Um, so this will be you know, as we go forward in the off season, we start when we start to see the new regime come in. We're going to have shows about that. We're going to be talking about the new GM the new scouting director. It's going to be pretty exciting. And and, yeah. and it's going to go all the way in through the, the, the draft free agency, all, all of that. Um, it, it's going to be very interesting to watch them build this roster getting ready for camp. It's going to be, it's going to be a big change. And, and the other thing is this new regime does not have to go out and win, you know, they they they're 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 going to be given a two year chance. As much as it sucks, as Commanders fans, after what we've been through, you know, th- there's no one going to be. Well, okay, there will be some people freaking out if we don't go to the playoffs. <laughs> no, I've already seen them. <laughs> Plenty of morons out there. We know it. But really, for the most part, they're going to get a chance to build this roster. Yeah. You yep. know, so I'm excited. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited. I'm a little worried about what we have now <laughs> between, <Yeah. laughs> between the injuries and and trying to cobble this thing together. Um, but it will be it will be good, and you know what? It'll be a hopefully they go young, they go fast, and they go strong. You know, like we got Eugene Shen in there, and you know he's the analytics guy. He's going to point them in the direction to where the values are, and and some of these shitty drafts we've had getting stop doing that stuff man stop it's, drafting the wrong people at the wrong place yeah dude I, that, that last draft really hasn't played out too well maybe give it a little more time but ugh, it looks pretty rough so even the year before that too looks pretty suspect so yeah not taking that away from ron should be helpful i want to yep. see his new guys coming in too i just want to see a straight gm you know, I want to see a straight head coach. I don't want to see head coach slash GM, head coach slash offensive coordinator, offensive coordinator slash assistant head coach. None of that fucking bullshit. I want to see everybody just have their own fucking job, and that is it. You do this, yep. you, do, you do that, you do that, and that, that way it doesn't muddy things up. And if they hire people correctly, that that should be done. Correct. That's yeah. fine. You know, if they're doing it like they're supposed to be, like we talked about on the show before, starting from the top down, you you have to have a, a firm idea of what you want and you hire to that idea. Right now, we're just a patchwork of people, people that Ron brought in, people that yeah. have to move up or this or that. It, it, these guys get to lay fresh bricks 
for this thing and they and it should all line up and that's what i'm the most excited about is them hiring to the main idea whoever the guy is up top the way he wants to fucking do it i'm fine with it i don't really give a shit so, you know strong defense so that the offense only has to score a little bit that's fine by me whatever they want to do but i just would like to see it as a nice pyramid that starts with a good solid base and builds up and that way everybody is on the same page like when eb came in he's working with assistant coaches that we're teaching people to the old, to the, to Scott Turner's way of doing things. And so they all had to learn or not learn or whatever they were doing to teach people how EB wants things. And so with this new regime coming in, they will all be on the same page. They will all be teaching and coaching to the same idea. And that's what I'm most excited about. Yep. You nailed it, man. That's what's going to make it really cool instead of patchwork. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm fairly critical of eb i don't think he's done that great a job i don't know if i you know he was hey have you know get a new quarterback and have eb develop him well the last young quarterback he had crashed and burned and he's on the bench now yeah. so i'm not i'm not blaming eb for that but he didn't elevate him i mean the guy i would like to have for our uh, head coach um is a offensive coordinator pretty young guy bobby slowick um out of uh he's from texas right now He's an offensive coordinator there. Um, you know, that guy had uh, C.J. Stroud, the rookie. Mm. And Stroud just got a bad concussion, so he's been out. But he he elevated C.J. Stroud. He, made, he gave C.J. Stroud an offense where he could be successful. And E.B. didn't do it. But to your point, like you said, E.B. doesn't have an offensive line coach that, block, that teaches blocking the way EB wants blocking done and the way he wants his running backs to run and the way he wants his receivers run. He kind of just got here and had to bring in all these assistants that like you say, aren't locked into his style. And with this new regime, everyone from the top to the guy who fills up the Gatorade buckets yep. to the head cheerleader, <laughs> we'll know you're, this is the goal. This is how we operate. This is how we present ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and from top to bottom, we're going to be focused to that. Yeah. Uh, and I like having I like having Shen there too, because Shen's going to tell them how we draft. A lot of our draft mistakes, I mean, we're taking people. It's not so much too early, too late, this and that. But man, you know, you go out and get a defensive tackle with your second pick in a draft, Fedarian, who hasn't worked out very well. No. But besides that, Eugene Shen would have gone, no morons, you. You have potentially $120 million in salaries on your D-line already. Yeah. You don't, don't yeah. get a defensive tackle. Right. What are you thinking? And yeah. you could probably say the same about Jahan Dotson. Yeah. You know, at the time, I mean, Jahan was great, but you couldn't have found an offensive tackle. Eugene Shen would say, hey, you just got Diami Brown. You got Terry McLaurin. You got Curtis Samuel under mm -hmm. contract. You got some good weapons. And, and you know what I mean? So anyway, I just feel like we're not going to see that. So, um, well, I think I'm good, we, man. I think we look at uh, just one more thing on all of that. I, I think uh, we've talked about this before, too. We look attractive to people. No more Dan Finally. Snyder. You know, we're, we're, we're building a new thing. And these people are looking towards us. Hopefully, man, I want a job with them. They're starting out on the ground floor. I want to get in with a. With an organization like that, I want to go work for them, not, oh, will you come work for us? You know, who, who yeah. can find out, look, Ron's going to do it. The, the fool's going to do it. You know, I don't want to hire a head coach that way. I want to hire a head coach who's hot yeah. to come in and do something. And I think we attract that with, yeah. you know, 90 to 100 million in cap space and lots of plenty of uh, draft up front. And a new organization, you know, with possibly a new uh, uh, stadium on the way, blah, blah, blah. You know, lots of enticing looking things. And so, uh, yeah, it's looking good to me. We just got to wrap yep. up the rest of this year. It's all and get through I the know. next two games unscathed. Hopefully no one gets any injuries and save a little face here. See what some people can do and yep. uh, yeah, move forward. Yep. I agree, man. So, yeah, we got to just work out these games. But I'll be there on Sunday. 
one o'clock. While you're live streaming? Yep. And uh, see what we got with that those filthy Niners. Uh, we have to fight them tooth and nail. We have to claw and cheat and do everything possible to win that game. Hell yeah, dude. The big win up against San Francisco. Watch them totally shit the bed. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm yep. up for it. And then fucking beat the dirty Dallas Cowboys the week after that. They're going to yeah, be those scumbags. Too. Lord yep. have mercy. They look like crap yep. the other day as well. They did. <laughs> There's a lot of weird games this week. Just some stuff. Weird. Ter- terrible. I know. I hate throwing shade at him, but, you know, Wilson, he, Russell Wilson got benched, as you know. Probably yep. the, they, they talk about the injury thing. If he gets injured, they owe him another 37 mil or something like that. And blah, so just take him out. Don't yeah, you know, he might, he could break that finger. Yeah, he could. He might break that finger. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, running out onto oh, the know, field, he can trip and fall. And, oh, I hurt my knee. Ow! So in thirty-seven. Oh, ouch! Shit, that that fucker. He's gonna have to bring it. Yeah, he's gonna have to renegotiate oh, yeah. contract. He's done. He did. He does the same thing he did in Seattle. Dude, that oh, his numbers look decent. He fucking orchestrated a pretty nice fourth fourth quarter thing and, and almost won, but. But that's his mo. That's his stick. And and he, when he was young, he could do it. And now he, yeah, he can't do it. He he's he's not what they. He's not two hundred and forty five million dollars worth of <sighs> quarterback. I'll tell you that. So and plus all oh. the draft picks they gave up, two or three number ones, and oh my, it was God. incredible. Pretty incredible. disaster. Hopefully we'll get yeah. a uh, something going here for this game and finish out the season good. Yep, let's get some good play out of these young guys, man. So I'll see you then, Scrub. All right, thanks, dog. Thank you, everybody. Hope you all had a good Christmas.